Those days with Jesus. I'm going to return this morning to Luke chapter 12 and spend some time with verses 35 through 48. And just a wonderful reminder for us. Is it's so easy uh, to get distracted. So let's read it together. Luke chapter 12, beginning at verse 35. Uh, be prepared, Jesus says, and keep your lamps lit. You are also to be like people who are waiting for their master when he returns from the wedding feast. So they may immediately open the door for him when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master will find on the alert when he comes. Truly, I say to you that he will prepare himself to serve and have them recline at the table and he will come up and serve them. Whether he comes in the second watch or even in the third and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But be sure of this, that if the head of the house had known what hour the thief was coming, he would not have allowed his house to be broken into. You too be ready because the Son of Man is coming in an hour, which you do not think that he will. Peter said, Lord, are you, are, are you telling this parable to us or to everyone else as well? And the Lord said, who then is faithful and the sensible steward, whom his master will put in charge of a service to give him their rations at the proper time? Blessed is that his slave whom his master finds so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you that he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But if the slave says in his heart, my master will take a long time to come, he begins to beat the other slaves, both men, men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk. Then a master of that slave will come on a day that he does not expect, and an hour that he does not know, and will cut him in two and assign him a place with the unbelievers. And that slave who knew his master's will and did not get ready or act in accordance with his will will receive many blows. But the one who did not know and act, committed acts deserving of a beating will receive only a few blows. From everyone who has been given, much will be demanded, and to whom they've entrusted much of him. They will ask all the more. We won't cover everything in this parable, but I do want to make... Uh, just a simple and obvious application, preparation. Jesus here presents images of, of those prepared, prepared for the master's return. You know, we're to be like those people waiting for the master's return from the wedding feast, waiting for the master to come home so that the minute he arrives, we're eager at the door, opening it, awake, ready, but ready, prepared for his return. Did you catch verse 38? Read it again because it's important, whether he comes in the second watch or even in the third and finds them so. Blessed are those slaves. They don't know when the master will return. We don't. Maybe it's in the middle of the night, maybe the second watch, maybe near the dawn, that's the third watch. Jesus even likens his return to that of a thief in the night. The thief is uh, in the night is unexpected, it's unannounced. So what's the teaching? Well, the servant has to always be ready. So let's finish with this. What's ready look like? What's it look like when one is truly prepared for the master's return? Read verse 43 again. Blessed is that slave whom his master finds so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you that he will put him in charge of all his possessions. To be ready is to be faithful. The master finds us doing, doing his will. Certainly that would involve being in his word and studying his word and living his word. Verse 45 again, but if that slave says in his heart, my master will take a long time to come, begins to beat the other slaves, both men and women, to eat and drink and get drunk, and the master of that slave will come on a day that he doesn't expect, and Valerie doesn't know, and will cut him in two and assign him a place with all the unbelievers. To be prepared is to be faithful. To be unprepared is to be a lazy procrastinator. You know, he, he reasons it's going to take a long time to come from the unfaithful steward. So they start needlessly beating us other servants. They're eating, they're getting drunk. They're, uh, I just want you to take note that this is a parable about his people, not the world. It's possible, brethren, for us to get lulled to sleep, to get lulled to distraction. Days go by, years go by, and we began to listen to the clutter and begin to reason, well, maybe he's not coming back, certainly not coming back today or even tomorrow or even the next day. So we begin to live to ourselves without any urgency as to preparation. And what's going to happen to those of that mindset? Uh, verse 46, and the master of that slave will come on a day that he doesn't expect, an hour that he doesn't know, and he will cut him in two and assign him a place with the unbelievers. That's, that's most graphic language, isn't it? But it's language designed to emphasize our need for preparation, for staying ready. Our Lord is coming back, brethren. And what will he find in us? Will we be ready? Will we be faithful? Will we be blessed? Sitting at that banquet table forever with our Lord in eternal bliss. That's the goal. So be faithful, be prepared. And let's be ready. Would you pray with me, please? Our Father in heaven, Father, for another day in your word, we are so very thankful for the wisdom that it gives us, Father, the direction, the reminders. Father, we get so distracted. We allow this world at times to creep in and to cloud our judgment. We become conformed if we're not careful, Father. We just ask you to give us courage to navigate these things, to give us wisdom, Father, to bless us with opportunities to 
to show others then that your way is truly best, Father. The world's way doesn't work. We see it daily. We see it often. But we pray for these people. We pray for those at the levels in our country who are making decisions on behalf of us. We ask you to bless them, and to, Father, that they would have the wisdom to look to you for guidance, that we would be a nation that would turn back to you, Father. We recognize, Father, that that starts with me, and it starts with, with those around us. And we just ask, Father, that that you would continue to bless us. Father, we're so thankful for the way that you blessed us at Kenwood. We've been through a lot, but you've been there right with us, Father. And for that, we're so very thankful for all the answered prayers. We're so very thankful for your comfort. We're so very thankful. And certainly, Father, we ask you to be with the Green family and the loss of Susan's uncle. Father, we uh, continue to pray for those who are shut in. We ask you to be with our sister Katie, with Clarice, to be with Jeanette, to be with all of those, Father. We want to be out. We're thankful for Madge and her continued um, improvement, but continue to pray for her. We pray for Cody and Morgan as, as they'll be having their baby. Father, we pray that everything will go well with that. We're thankful that Zach and Michelle's baby is doing better. So thankful for the safe delivery of Carrie and John's little boy, uh, Wade, Father. Bless us immensely. Continue to do that, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.